Why don't you give folks a little bit of what your official title is and what you do or your responsibilities there at the Schultz Law Firm? Sure. Uh, I'm a senior associate attorney with Schultz Trade Law here in Dallas, Texas. We are a woman-owned, all-female lawyer law firm at the moment, and we do everything trade-related. So imports, exports, sanctions, uh, defense services, pretty much everything in the trade space we handle. And fortunately, because Michelle is such a good mentor, she's gotten me involved in all of those different areas. Uh, my background is in exports and sanctions. I worked on a corporate monitorship for a company that had been convicted of export violations. So that's how I got into the space. Yes, it was. Um, I was a litigator. So I'm a reformed litigator. Now I will never go back. Trade law is where I want to sit. But really, I'm handling every type of case that trade law throws at us, which is a wild and amazing ride, especially these days. Yeah, it was like one wild and crazy time. Okay, three-day event. I had some keynote speakers. Anything in particular that came up that, uh, as far as the speakers that was either surprising or very important to take note of here? Uh, so as per usual, we had Assistant Secretary Matt Axelrod give an address at the conference. And the main reason that I like to go to this conference, other than catching up with all of my friends, is because he will drop some fresh knowledge and for some fresh policies during that speech. And the theme of the conference this year was partnerships in national and global security, which built a lot off of the year before. So I think it was 2022, they had to push back 2023, which was building a network of global cooperation. So the emphasis for the most part from what I heard from BIS representatives was uh, interagency cooperation, international cooperation, and industry cooperation. Those were the points that they were really trying to drive home. And uh, so, all right, go through there again. In, industry at cooperation, mm -hmm. corporate. Inter you said, and go ahead. Interagency, ah, international, okay. and industry. Three eyes. All, right. all right. So with that, the interagency comes into play. Where it sounds like. There And I have seen some other things, and I'll mention that in just a second, but <clears throat> I've seen some like emails and announcements on some uh, things, but interagency would be the connotation of multiple agencies literally collaborating in an effort to, I guess, for enforcement activities. Would that be fair? Yes, for sure. Uh, so... BIS talked a lot about the new disruptive technology strike force and the successes that they've had with their investigations. They're working with the Department of Justice and Homeland Security, and I believe there's one more agency that was recently added. Uh, so that was one of the focuses of their interagency. But also they were highlighting that defense, state, treasury, um, Justice are all going to be involved in these reviews and warning industry that they'll be cooperating. Uh, one of the more fascinating things I heard, much to people's dismay, I think, was in um, a QA and a session after uh, the last BIS plenary. And someone had asked, if we voluntary dis voluntarily disclose, are we going to be uh, safe from enforcement action. And the response was, well, not necessarily, especially if there are aggravating factors and we may know information about you that you don't know. And a lot of that is coming Whoa. from the trade cooperation. Yeah. Drop the mic on that one. I bet that is like there were crickets after that, or either that, or there was a lot of ooh. <laughs> was, I yeah. looked over at uh, Kelly McCorkle. She's been on this podcast, and she's our um, senior trade advisor at Schultz Trade Law. And I just gave her big eyes, like ooh, uh oh. <laughs> but I guess things you need to consider when you're doing business just to see what you're dealing with as far as your customer base, running names through. Uh, you know, your databases, like your, your accounts, uh, payable accounts receivable type entities and all that. 
would that is that something that I'm like it, it, it's like now, Andy, that you're you're that you're pounding sand there. It's not going to do anything, or is it going to be something to say? No, this is probably a legitimate uh, request there to, for people to do. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you want to know your customer, but you also want to know your vendors. You want to know the banks. You want to know the freight forwarders. You want to know every single party in this transaction because you're absolutely right. These regulations and the uh, restricted party lists from various agencies are changing day by day. Uh, it's best practice for companies to have automatic, automated screening processes, and that's cost prohibitive for a lot of entities. But on the flip side, you know, for example, the consolidated screening list that has the OFAC list, BIS, et cetera, that updates every morning at 5 a.m. Eastern, I think. So if you're not pulling that list and screening all of your business partners every day, then you're at a really high risk of ending up in a situation you don't want to be in. Um, so it's definitely hugely important. And then one of the, the hot knowledge uh, surprises that we got from BIS is that um, the Office of Anti-Boycott Compliance has been maintaining a list of people who have requested, have made boycott requests. Uh, I think last year they changed the form where you have to not only identify the country where the boycott request came from, but also who did it. And for now, they've been keeping it a secret, but they just dropped the list and named and shamed everybody. So we've got okay, so another to that, list. Let's back up a minute here before we go sure. any further. Why don't you ex explain that a little bit? Some folks are talking about it as, are you doing that in the States? you doing that around or what? You know, what? explain that a little bit to, you know, somebody like myself is like dumb as a box of rocks. Right? You almost have to draw <laughs> pictures, pictures here. But I understand the boycott scenario where, all right, there's this collaborative effort to not do business with a person or an entity or company or whatever. How is that in relation to the U.S. government and what you're just talking about? Sure. So in the export administration context, any boycott is referring to uh, U.S. people being prohibited from complying with boycotts that the U.S. doesn't agree with. With the uh, collaboration of the government and whatever, anything else that came out of uh, the BIS conference uh, speeches and, and uh, uh, sessions? All sorts of stuff. Um, the other three issues that Assistant Secretary Axelrod talked about, new policy developments, are um, publishing new freight forwarder guidance for best practices, which I think is going to be helpful. And... Um, in the context of our discussion earlier about any boycott compliance, BIS is going hard on any boycott enforcement and they will be issuing penalties. So this new guidance includes any boycott compliance advice for freight forwarders, which is great uh, because, you know, they may not necessarily be thinking, oh, I need to be worrying about this provision of the export regulations. They also published a new Don't Let This Happen to You, which is everybody's favorite document from BIS, I think. What else uh, as far as uh, your, your thoughts and impressions here? Uh, very similar to last year, it was um, very clear that the U.S. government agencies involved in trade are coming down hard against Russia and coming hard down hard against PRC. So there were separate sessions on China-specific updates and Russia-specific updates, but it's very clear that this is still, um, these are still two priority areas of regulation for the United States right now, which makes sense. Uh, we heard that licenses to these destinations are probably going to take longer than they have historically because they're getting caught up in this interagency review. Uh, the Department of Defense in particular has said that they're going through a lot of this stuff with a fine tooth comb uh, to make sure that there's no technology uh, or products that are going to people that shouldn't be. Um, so yeah, so Russia and China, big, big focus right now. Um, China, especially in the semiconductor context. These semiconductor sessions were the only warm rooms in this entire conference because there were people stacked 
in there, uh, so many that there needed to be overflow rooms for semiconductors. And there were representatives from dang near every major technology company you can think of. I mean, the industry attendance at this conference was incredible. Uh, but yeah, people were very excited and apprehensive about the semiconductor session. So that's another big one. But yeah, um, BIS has published a lot of their statements and their policies on their website. So if people are interested in new developments from them, they can go there. Um, in fact, much to the frustration of all of us, one of the uh, responses to a lot of our questions about what's gonna happen is, Keep an eye out on our website. We'll let you know. <laughs> so that's a good resource to look at. Well, is this, uh, would that be like BIS.gov? Yes. Yes. So specifically their um, press releases. Uh, I know, for example, that they just issued new semiconductor comments and corrections, which are of very much interest to people in that space. Uh, I don't think that made it out into their press release documents, but they have a email blast system, uh, so does Treasury, that you can sign up for and get notifications about when they make changes.